Hi, my name is Benedict, relatively short video. Over the last couple of days, the internet's been a Twitter, the door sphere has been a, I don't know, whatever it is door people do, over this um, uh, minimal audio morph EQ, like it's the most amazing thing and that uh, it's open doors that have never been there before and what have you. I was actually asked to review it by higher hertz, but imagine my surprise when I get to minimal audio and find that you've got to actually spend the $49 before you can actually try the device. Whereupon, if you decide that it's not really for you, they say that they will give you a refund. They'll send you money back to your PayPal, at which point you will lose some of your funds. So I walked away at that point. I simply said, well, these guys don't want anybody's business. Um, but it's, it's an interesting concept. But as somebody from a Bitwig user has pointed out, you really don't need this device. And he's correct, because you have the ability to do effectively everything that's happening here already, if you thought about it. So what Minimal Audio are doing is either option A, making something that we don't do because we just don't think to do it, uh, B, making something that we could do but we don't end up doing because we find it too hard or are just too bone lazy, um, or C, uh, cashing in on the, um, well, the credulity of certain people in Dorville. Now, sadly, based on their, well, you have to buy it before you can try it approach, I'm going with column C. Uh, interesting concept in that you've got this EQ, this pretty typical looking EQ, you set your, your EQ points, and then you can draw a morph curve. It can be quite a complex convoluted morph curve, which then means as you move through the morph, it moves those points around in, well, 2D space um, based upon the curve that you gave it. So basically in film editing terms, it's a keyframed EQ. Now, let me tell you, boys and girls, as the fellow, um, I'll see if I can find the video and, and pop a picture up because it's only fair. The fellow from Bitwig was showing this is doable in any door and it doesn't even have to be a door with CVs or modulation. Um, it just has to be a door that has automation. So here's a concept. You can see the bouncing around points. And this may not have been the perfect EQ to use for this, uh, because it's a mixing EQ, not a uh, non get aggressive. So maybe I should have used the KHS, the kilohertz um, EQ that I have, but I was dug in by then and it's like, yeah, does the job. So what you can see is I've got some stuff that's going on regardless of what's happening. That's that one there, which is coming through from LFOs, and some which are just drawn in. Now, the drawn in thing is exactly what they're offering, except they allow you to draw a path. You can set your, what you might call default state, let's say here, and then you can draw a keyframe path, and then use their morph knob to go from here to there, which is absolutely no different from doing this. The only difference here is that you have to use a couple of lots of automation to achieve that particular thing. So if we go with band four, straight, And none of this is about whether you think that it's the coolest EQ. As I said, this one's possibly a little weak for the process. And number five. Again, just showing how we can draw it move around. Put the pair of them together. Dancing EQ curves. We've always been able to do it. 
always, always, always. Uh, to be honest, I don't do it a lot, and it's not a thing I think of, but from time to time I have done it, normally to create um, a kind of phaser effect. The other option that we've got, and this is what the fellow from Bitwig showed more, was this approach, which is to use some LFOs or other modulation sources, which allows us to set up this regular kind of thing. Or if we turn off our tempo syncing, something that we might consider more morphing and evolving. If we put these back in. Which brings me to one of the advantages of being able to do it this way. Now, I haven't obviously been able to try Morph EQ, but I assume, seeing there's only one Morph knob, that when you draw your keyframe paths, they're probably always going to travel at the same speed with regards to each other. Here, we obviously these are going to stay the same because of automation, but if we add um, LFOs, which are not BPM synced, boys and girls, then we're going to get constantly evolving movement. See how they don't really marry up. There are similarities, but they don't marry up all the time, which is a good reason to leave BPM sync off on these. Now, if it were one of mine, I might say something like, okay, let's make that one a little bit longer. Let's make that one a little bit shorter. Copy it, copy it. So, because these are not the same length as each other, it takes a while for them to end up back in the same position. And that's more versatile than something that is admittedly very, very pretty, but is is kind of kind of always be stuck in exactly the same position. The only way you can change that, obviously, is to change the speed of the morph knob, or your points between morph begins, morph ends, which you could do in this sort of situation and say, okay, well, we'll offset it by a bar or something like that, you know, three bars against the four bars, uh, and it'll take a while for them to, to marry up again. Obviously, the longer your bar things is, if you've got 16 bars and you set it to 13 bars, it's going to take a while before it marries up. Um, but really, you can just do it with LFOs. And just about every door has the ability to do that. Now, before you say, oh, but you're just trying to be mean to, to minimal audio. Well, I think minimal audio has brought a certain amount of this on themselves uh, because, well, they've said, here, you can't try our thing. That's, to me, a pretty mean kind of thing to have done. Um, but at the same time, I think they are one of many companies pitching into the door sphere, uh, trying to, well, desperately find something that's easy to do and that people will pay for, uh, rather than sort of going, okay, how can we do something new? Because this isn't new. This is stuff that people have actually forgotten to do, uh, but not new. Um, find, find something new, boys and girls, rather than doing this kind of stuff. Now, they are capable. Their little rift, uh, when it first came out, there was a free version. I got it. I thought it was rather cool. Next thing I know, it wouldn't run. Um, so I have been put off several times by these guys. But really, my point here is exactly the same as the, the fellow from um, the, the Bitwig user, is that you can do all this stuff already in just about any door. If you don't have access to some kind of modulation system, you can do it with automation. And you can use regular LFO shapes, or you can make weird shapes. My only recommendation is that your start and end point be the same place so that it marries up when you 
copy and paste and and drag it out. So the advantage of of this approach is that um, you can make much more interesting kinds of sounds even if we just take the I brought this in just so it made it easy to control the LFOs, what's going where, how much is going, all of that kind of stuff. You can keep your phases the same or you can offset them. And there's nothing wrong with setting one of these to a different form. So, ba 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 ba. That one, this was always written the wrong way around. So, whatever functions your, your EQ has. I just picked this because it's free and it's normally my go-to where I'm looking for something a little bit more complex than the um, than the stock SSL uh, EQ that's in here. But if you've been looking at that uh, morph thing and you're going, hmm, and especially like me are, are annoyed at their, uh, their suggestion that we should pay for a thing before we can even try it um, and lose money in the process probably if we say no, especially like if I was going to review it, it's like, oof, ugh. Anyway, uh, then you can do this using stock tools in essentially any door and the way that you do it, the way that you choose to get creative and come up with the results is going to mean that you haven't got the same, well, formula sand that everybody else has who's uh, a little too casually parted with their $49 is. If you think this is mean, whatever, just see it as a, hey, we don't always have to pay for new toys when we've got the facility already in our existing doors. And this is not a, I'm not pitching this as a, oh, well, Reason can do this because Bitwig can do it. I bet it's doable in Reaper. It's, I don't think there would be a single door out there worth anything where you couldn't do this. I mean, maybe you can't do it in core, you know, the, the, the cheapy band lab or something like that. But by the time you get into this kind of stuff, if you're staying in the band lab camp, then you probably should have moved on to Cakewalk. So get your toys out, actually get creative, work out how to do your own thing. And that way, not only have you saved $49 that you can put towards something more useful, like maybe paying a mix engineer, although paying a mix engineer $49 isn't going to get you much of a mix. Um, but nonetheless, three VSTs that you buy at $50 each, $150, there's the beginnings of a mix that's worth having. It's a better investment for you than, uh, than VSTs that you really didn't need in the first place if you opened your mind to going, what if I did that, rather than waiting for somebody to tell you what to do. If you have any broad questions, or hire me anything like that on down below. You have a great day.